question is for Mr. Bailey. What specific changes will you make to both ports to improve efficiency and lower costs? There's only so much you can do in a court. Frankly, uh, not having had uh, access to the court for the last, since April, I can't speak uh, specifically. I computerized both courts when I was in office, which of course increased the efficiency. Uh, we were able to cut one staff person in probate when she retired and I replaced her. One thing I tried to do about 10, 15 years ago was to see if we could get into video detention hearings. I checked into it, but the only access we had to uh, the Martin Center was by cable TV and the county would have had to pay to run a cable line out uh, Fredericksburg Road, and that simply wasn't feasible. I would assume with new computer technology that that would be something I would definitely want to pursue again. Uh, it would save transportation costs, and it would certainly uh, save employee time if the uh, magistrate didn't have to travel out there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Ms. Wild? I think um, that I made a lot of changes that would increase the efficiency um, and also cut court expenses at the same time. I have um, since taken off and signed a new contract for a new technology within the court which would allow for electronic filing within the court. Eventually we would go paperless. Um, this would save money in the long term. Um, we are working with the Linda Martin Attention Center currently to provide for remote access and video conferencing um, within the court. Since taking office, I have cut court expenses by, um, in a number of ways, by not filling um, positions that have um, come open in the third quarter since I've been in office. Um, this has provided for a cost savings of $45,000, which would ultimately have an annual effect of $180,000 for the court. We're also... Oh, sorry. Thank you. I'd like to respond. Sure, Mr. Daly. I think a lot of those savings have been in salaries. Uh, two people who were employed by Judge Lisey were fired. Uh, two employees resigned. One new employee was hired to fill one of the positions and then she resigned. And I believe that position is still vacant. I'm not so sure that the court is being run efficiently uh, and just by sacrificing staff to do it. The, uh, when I came into office, I made a change with one of the magistrates. I hired a new magistrate. Since making that change, um, the number of hearings that that magistrate holds has gone up 40%. Um, the changes that I have made have increased efficiency within the court. The um, other position that my opponent is referring to is the court administrator position. That position is currently filled. It is filled because we are working collaboratively with the other judges of the common pleas court and bringing the courts together, unifying the courts, having one court administrator over the entire uh, common police court. Thank you, Ms. Wiles. I'd like to respond. Uh, I'm gonna just make an observation. Uh, you have two candidates for judges here, and it seems that uh, Judge Wiles is running against Judge Eliza most of the time, uh, talking about things that he did that she didn't approve of and changed. Uh, which I find ironic since she's relying so heavily upon his endorsement. Anything further? No. I don't feel the need to respond to that. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Please detail your experience and qualifications for the job of probate juvenile judge and what passion drives you to do this job. And we'll start with you, Ms. Wiles. Um, my experience includes experience on both sides of the bench. Um, since taking office, um, I've been on, had on-the-job experience every day, hearing a variety of cases and issues. 
uh, prior to taking office, I litigated the cases in front of that court. I was a prosecutor. I prosecuted over 400 child abuse and neglect cases, um, handled, had eight years of experience handling elder abuse, guardianship type cases, um, handled um, over 200 appeals in the higher courts. The court that, the higher courts are the courts that I now answer to as a trial court judge, um, arguing a variety of issues that come before me every day, um, from criminal issues to child abuse issues to um, sex offender registration issues. I worked very closely. Oh. Sorry, my time is up. Thank you, Ms. Wiley. Mr. Bailey? Okay. The first job I had after graduating from college was a job I'd already had for about a year, and that was as a uh, probation officer for Judge Adrian Miller. And that was as an adult probation officer and divorce custody investigator. I will admit that I kind of gave up on adult offenders after a year. Uh, from what I'd seen working with youth, which would be the only answer to criminal acts by adults, catching them when they were young and hopefully changing their behavior. I started as a juvenile probation officer in 1968. The only work I've ever done has been to work with children as a teacher, probation officer, referee, judge, visiting judge. I now teach law school students who are, of course, a little bit older than young, some children, but I'm still working with the young, at least they look young to me anymore. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Anything else? Okay, let's move on to the next question. What is your view on incarceration slash detention versus probation for juvenile offenders? Really? There are some people who need to be uh, incapacitated uh, for their own safety or for the safety of others. That number is relatively few, although in the United States we are number one in the world for the number of people we lock up per capita. As a result of that, the uh, General Assembly, just in the last year or two, had to change the law because we can't afford to lock up everybody we don't like or want to be around. And especially when kids are young, locking them up with criminals, young criminals from Toledo and Akron and Cincinnati is not really a good environment. I believe incarceration should be the last resort because it's expensive and because it doesn't work. Except incapacitate. So if all you want to do is limit their opportunities, you can't be incapacitation. But it has little to do with rehabilitation. Thank you, Mr. Bailey as well. I think my view is similar to my opponents. I think in juvenile court, treatment and rehabilitation is the court's primary concern. Um, incarceration is the last resort. The court's always looking at um, being able to provide the necessary treatment for the child in the least restrictive means available. Um, the uh, Linda Martin Detention Center is a facility that we use when we do need to detain youth uh, for whatever reason. And while the youth are there, they get a number of services, including um, counseling, schooling, treatment, things of that nature. So I, I think probably our views are very similar on that. Okay, any other comments? <coughs> Go ahead and move to the next question then. The juvenile court partners with various social service agencies for treatment and other services. If elected, what will you do to improve or change these relationships? Ms. Wiles? I um, will continue to improve upon efforts, uh, improve the relationship with these agencies, efforts that I uh, began making upon taking office in April. We, um, as a court, uh, applied for a grant with your Human Resource Center, for instance, a reentry grant um, that would allow for uh, education, uh, treatment, mentoring of youth who are reentering after um, spending some time at the Department of Youth Services. 
I've also uh, been working cooperatively with the Child Support Enforcement Agency to um, partner with them and have a contract with them which would provide a cost savings and reimbursement uh, to the county general fund. So I think I've already taken these actions and I will continue to um, facilitate those good working relationships that I've made. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Okay. Well, starting at the last point, working my way backwards, uh, when I was in office, we did have a contract uh, with child support. We had the first contract both for clerical as well as for the magistrate. Again, Judge Lively terminated that for some reason, and I'm, I'm glad to see people working to get it back. It is tax dollars we can benefit from. As far as working with other agencies, when I was in office again, for example, we had people from Human Resource Center and, and workers from Catholic Social Services to provide services. I did that in two ways. One, by contract, I didn't obligate the county to their future employment. But we did incorporate them to staff. They came to staff meetings every Wednesday along with the probation officers. I was also a founding member of the Children or Family and Children First Council and developed a lot of the procedures such as the diversion team, which has enabled us to work successfully for the last 20 years as a team. Okay, let's move on to the next question. What kinds of programs would you initiate to help children who would come before you to improve their lives and help them become responsible citizens? <coughs> and we'll start with Mr. Bailey. Uh, there's a couple of things I'm interested in. Uh, years ago, I started having every child tested to see how they learn, because some children learn best when they hear things, some when they read it. Some when they have, are given examples, and it was a problem with knowing whether the child actually understood the obligations of being on probation. A newer program that I'm very interested in now is called Trauma-Informed Care, and that is where you can look into a child's history, see what trauma that child has gone through, uh, as many of the kids in court have gone through, and see how that is causing their behavioral problems. So that's something I'd like to implement more. Also, Family Fine is another program I would like to see uh, CSB and the court get more involved in. Great, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Ms. Wells? Um, since taking office, I've been uh, meeting with the schools to address the school's uh, truancy problems. And um, I would continue to uh, put forth these efforts. Um, the, what our court has done uh, recently was to create a type of truancy probation. Um, so I would continue to further develop that program that we created in response to concerns from the schools as to uh, how our programs as they currently exist were or rather were not um, solving the problem within the schools. So I would continue um, making efforts in this regard. Um, also, we're looking at furthering community service opportunities um, within the community and partnering um, with various agencies uh, to do this. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Wells. The next question is, how does your own age and family experience give you a helpful perspective as a juvenile court judge? And we'll start with you, Ms. Wells. Okay. Well, um, my age, I think, uh, allows me to have, number one, the youth and energy for the job. Obviously, I will uh, be able to uh, serve more than one full term. Uh, if elected, um, I will uh, bring a fresh perspective to the court that hasn't um, been there previously. And um, I think my um, age, my uh, connection to youth, uh, my um, knowledge as to the current issues facing youth, 
um, such as uh, sex scenes and uh, bullying within the school. Um, I, I think my experience is a little bit more relevant on the new issues that are facing you today. Thank you, Ms. Wild. Mr. Bailey? Bullying isn't a particular way of new activity. Um, I haven't been sexting anybody, but I have had cases about it. Uh, I've been hearing cases for the last 10 years, so everything she's mentioned happens in Akron. In fact, it happens up in Summit County in Spade, along with shootings and a few other things. Uh, I think probably where, quote, my age uh, is an advantage is experience. When you've heard, uh, I, I heard 25,000 cases before I became judge, so I don't know how many I've heard totally. Plus, I have children who grew up in this county. I've been through the high school parent experience, elementary school PPO. I've got grandchildren now. I know about daycare. I know about grandparent needing to help family. I've got quite a bit of experience as a family person, I would say. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Uh, this will be your final question, then. Should you win this election, are you totally committed to completing your six-year term? Mr. Bailey, we'll start with you. It's not a six-year term, for one thing. It's the unexpired term, which ends in 2015. And yes, I'm committed to completing it, and I intend to run again. And it's true that I will have to retire at a point, and then I go back to being a retired judge. If Chief Justice has taken away age limitations, she puts it each individual. I have friends who are judges who are in their 80s that are still being appointed to their cases. Uh, one of our commissioners uh, is only a year younger than I will be when I'm forced to retire. So I think age is arbitrary. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> Ms. Wild? Well,